The Paul Heyman story, when I read it and I sat there and I thought about it, um, about his history with Vince, I don't think I was necessarily surprised, but I, I just, you know, the timing was kind of interesting. And I just wondered if you f- were surprised in any way or uh, what was your reaction when you heard the news? Um, I mean, I guess the thing is, is that it was inevitable just because it always is. Uh, but, you know, it's just a question of when. And I mean, when I got the the thing from WWE, it was like, OK, now. And I, I, I you know, I had certain feelings things that were going on that made me feel like it might come and the ratings are the ratings you know but every wrestling show's ratings aren't good right now and um but no i can't say i was shocked i I, at all at all but it, it wasn't like i was expecting it on that day either you know i guess the day i was okay this is the day i think that was kind of it um and it's it's another sign. Um, I mean, the idea that 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 Bruce Pritchard's going to be overseeing both that sort of surprised me. I thought that maybe that, that if they replaced Heyman, it would be with somebody else, just because I just can't imagine the workload involved, um, you know, at all. That it, it that makes no sense. I've never, you know, unless they're going to consolidate, in, unless the idea is to consolidate it into one one troop. You know what I mean? Where all the stars are on both shows, and that's their re- that's their idea of bolstering the ratings is all the stars on both shows, and then Vince had to pick one. So then the the t- if that's the case, if that is what they do, and I don't know that, um, I know it's been talked about. I don't know that that's happening, but if they do that, then it comes to okay, which one of the two do we pick? Um, then it's not as much of a surprise, and then the timing makes perfect sense too. If they did combine the rosters again, does that help or hurt the idea that they these are two separate brands on two separate television shows when it comes to TV contract renewals? That's years away. Um, but yes, it would not be too separate and, and it would be hard to split them again because you've done it so many times that people would just because every time you split them, everyone's going to go, uh, it's not going to last very long. They're going to start, you know, as soon as something gets bad, they're going to go back because that's what they always do. So, I mean, as far as the two stations and exclusivity, um, I mean, they may if they want it, they would have to get it in writing and they prop. I don't know how much they would push for it because. The reality is, is that I think that both stations, even though I know USA was actually unhappy with the change, um, very unhappy, by the way, um, I don't think that they were happy with the ratings. They understood the ratings. Um, I mean, they were told a long time ago that this is a rebuilding period and it was going to take time. And they understood that. Um I mean, the ratings were a lot higher and then the pandemic came and that's really what knocked it down the last, you know, three months. Um, And the same with SmackDown. Um, I cannot imagine Fox being thrilled with the ratings uh, either. I mean, considering what they were expecting. Um, So, you know, but again, you know, that's that's years away. I mean, not that many, it's four years away. Um, or yeah, a little over four years away. Well, four years away when they're negotiating, um, maybe a little less when they start negotiations, but who knows what the landscape's going to be then anyway, um, you know, between television and new technologies and everything like that. By, by the way, I realized that in the update, you, you mentioned that we were going, going to talk to Andreas Hale tonight um that is going to be rescheduled he had a last minute uh, thing come up but that will probably be rescheduled for next week or, or soon thereafter so i just wanted to get that in before we kept going um so back back to the story the other question and this is something 
that people were, I saw people were tweeting about, people were kind of asking me about. Where does Triple H fit in to this big picture if um, creatively, if a lot of people seem to think that he will be kind of the, the su- successor creatively with WWE, and I don't know that to be the case or not, but it would seem that uh, if he is uh, a bit of a savior here, they are definitely not bringing him uh, onto the main roster uh, shows to to help out or to be the lead guy or whatever. Like he is still, it's, it's NXT is still his his baby. But what does that what it, does that say anything? Do you do you think anything about that about the reason why Triple yeah, H is well, I mean, still I, doing? I, his I, doing? I thought that when uh, they hired Bischoff and um, Heyman in the first place. Yeah, me too. The, 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 you know, as soon as that, it's like, well, why them and not? Paul Levesque and to me it was very obvious you know to keep him from if it tanks he's protected right and I think it's the same thing now I mean but the problem is the Paul Levesque thing is a really interesting thing because um you know it's like he's the successor yet at the same time you know when when you talk about the ratings for these other shows the reality is is that the you know NXT is getting beaten head to head um, almost every week. I mean, even this last week where they had no business losing, although it was not a great NXT show, um, the reality is is that they were coming off of a of a big show and they should have they should have won the overall. I don't think I, they thought, were I thought they had a a nice opportunity to to win the week viewers wise, but also create something out of out of the pay per view. And and the show was fine. It just wasn't anything different from a normal NXT show. Yeah. But I mean, but in the big picture, I mean, the thing we're talking about is just that they lose almost every week and the NXT TV show. And it's it's not even just losing in in um, viewers because, I mean, they do and it's not good. But the fact is, is that he has a fresh slate and his own, you know, his own thing. And they're averaging, you know, their average viewer is is 58 years old right now. And. I don't know that if I am a company and I am looking at who is going to build my future that as smart as Levesque is, I I mean, you know, here's the thing, you know, with Heyman, I mean, it's like the one thing you can look at at Heyman and go like, look, you know, at the end of the day, what determines your stuff and it's ratings, even if you, you know, and the fact is, is that are the raw ratings good? No. Even before the pandemic, were they good? No, they were not. They were, da- they were down before the pandemic. They were down, uh, you know, on a percentage basis, less than before Heyman, but they were still down. And now they're down a lot more, you know, they're down way more, you know, but a lot of that's look, it's empty arena wrestling and it's what empty arena wrestling is. But, um, but with Levesque, I mean, it's he's got the oldest skewing show, even though in theory he should be able with with bringing up young guys and everything like that to be the youngest skewing show, just a, a less audience. But he's not even doing that. And it's like, OK, so what's he? I mean, there are things he's doing well, without a doubt. I think that, you know, the idea of the, you know, that that, that great, um, you know, building that they have with all that stuff and, and everyone training like athletes and all that. I mean, I know some people will knock some of it, but um, you know, and, and I guess, I guess you can, when you compare the guys, they turn out as compared to like the guys, new Japan turns out. So maybe there is something to that too. Um, I think that part of that is the, the fast food nature of it. It's like, I don't know that having 150 people or a hundred people, um, it was, it was actually close to 200 people, but that number of people all training as opposed to maybe like a new Japan where you might have seven or eight, I think that that develops, I think you develop a lot more good wrestlers by percentage and a lot better, you know, with, with, with small classes than you do with big classes. Um, so, you know, maybe there's the argument of, of, um, less guys but focusing on the guys who knows i don't know i mean that's i mean when i look at what danny davis did with a lot less guys and a lot less resources he on a percentage basis and on a star basis i mean you know danny davis had what was it cena orton lesnar dave batista you know all at the same time 
Um, and these guys haven't turned out anything like, you know, that as far as like later star power. Are, have they turned out guys that are technically as good? They probably have. Mm, yeah. The guys that are technically as good actually came from other places. So I don't I don't I don't know. That's that's a tougher one. But. Again, when you're talking about a guy to head your creative going forward, when when it's imperative to draw a younger audience, um, the reality is, is that they've done very poorly at drawing a young audience. And so, I mean, with with um, and that's not, you know, like with 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 Heyman and with Pritchard, you can always go, well, you've got Vince micromanaging and whenever they, you know, you know, Whenever, you know, how many times have you seen guys that are new guys on Raw, not as much SmackDown, but on Raw for sure, where they, you know, you get about three good wins out of them. And then all of a sudden, boom, their their knees, they're chopped off at the knees. So and, and that's that's Vince on NXT. You know, Vince is not doing that, but he is still I mean, I know that like the, the Paul Levesque thing is the savior is like the popular thing. And he. You know, he explains himself very well and all that. And I probably and I think he would be better than Vince. I mean, I do. But I also have to look at results. And no, no, no one's getting results, you know, really. When I when if you look at it, I mean, who's getting who's really out there getting results as far as younger viewers creating new stars um, that mean something Um you know, and and that, that's what the, especially now when, when business is down, you should be preparing for the future rather than going with a pat hand. And SmackDown is a lot of pat hand. Raw was obviously being built for the future and NXT was supposed to be the future too. And you know, the thing with the future is, is that at first, you know, you want that younger viewer because the older viewer isn't going to, the older viewer isn't going to, isn't going to jump on board with younger stars that's never how it works you know the when you rebuild a company it's always been you know getting you know really the teenagers you know not so much the kids but the teenagers and then the early 20s and then it becomes the hot thing in town and once the hot thing in town you know that's when these new stars are the stars that you kind of grow up with you know which is the story of the you know late 90s with both wcw and wwf and we don't have anything like that going on right now. What do you think about Pritchard's role here? Because I think at least the fear from the the consensus of people who follow this uh, closely is that Heyman would take chances and and try and make new stars, and Pritchard may not do so, and may That's simply true, without a doubt, and may simply want to you know, book the show uh, so that it makes Vince happy, which I know ev everyone kind of does, but maybe not take as many chances to uh, well, to push new talent. That's completely fair. That's exactly what I would expect is going to happen. Um, I mean, when, when that whole thing was going down, I mean, they had like, this is actually with Bischoff and with Heyman, um, you know, right, um, right before the, uh, you know, the Fox thing started. They were kind of like negotiating on who gets what. And, you know, Bischoff wanted everybody who was over and Heyman wanted everyone who wasn't over because he wanted to remake everything. So it's like Bischoff got Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt, who, you know, in theory, they were the hot guys on Raw. Um, but Strowman was difficult to book at that point. He kind of did everything with him and he was kind of one dimensional. And Bray Wyatt essentially killed every baby face he touched, although he was the hottest character in the whole company at the time. And, you know, and Heyman, you know, wanted these guys that that at the time, I mean, weren't even being used hardly at all. You know, Andrade and Aleister Black and, um, you know, that that whole crew, Buddy Murphy um, and, you know. And even, you know, revamping Bobby Lashley, revamping Drew McIntyre, you know, I mean, that was kind of um, his, you know, what he what he, he wanted a fresh slate. And, uh, you know, so but that that was also with, with Eric. But, you know, with with Pritchard, it's still been kind of like, you know, you go with those guys and, and Vince is more comfortable with them. I mean, 
you know, because again, you get a guy like, like, you know, the safe guy on raw, you know, number one, safe guys, Randy Orton. It's like, um, no matter what in Vince's mind, Randy Orton's made and, and whether the people like Randy Orton or not, I mean, he's, he's a good worker. He's, he's been a star forever. Vince sees him as a star and he's got that, you know, what Vince wants and thinks, you know, when, when things get bad, Vince always reverts back and you know, it's, it's tall guys with good bodies. That's what he reverts to and not great workers. Um, unless they can somehow get over immediately. And in this environment, when, when you're a great worker and you're held back to only doing s- or certain, certain things, you have to slow down, do less. Um, and it's the same three or four moves that you concentrate on as opposed to a wide variety. It's way, it takes a lot longer and it's way, way harder. So it's, um, so Yeah. I don't know what the other answer is, you know, because no one's getting new people over very well right now either. I mean, I suppose the one who's sort of in theory looking like he's doing well is Garza uh, because he's got a certain charisma to him. But reality is, is that I think that, but with no fans in the arena, um, I can't say that. I just say I can watch the TV and think it, but you never know how the fans are going to react unless you have fans. And so that's, and, and also, you know, one of the things with new guys is they're made by, I mean, they're made by, you put them out in front of the fans and if the fans and, and, and not have their legs cut off, of course, but you're, you're put out there in front of the fans, you're given a push and they either take to you or they ho hum with you, you know? And right now these fake fans that are just, you know, making noise and creating ambiance, they're not making, they're not going to make anybody new because everyone's the same. So you don't have this groundswell thing that you get with a real audience. So we don't know. We don't know if, if, if Drew McIntyre's over or not. And, and he's not going to get over to the fan at home on television, like a big star, unless the live fans make him a big star. And then the people watching on television see him as a big star. The TV fans don't come first and the TV ratings don't come first. The TV ratings come later, um, you know, and so we don't we don't know with Drew McIntyre. I mean, although Drew McIntyre will be safe because he's six foot five and he's got a good body and he's a good worker. So he ticks all the boxes. He'll be OK. But, you know, it's like the big move. I mean, Heyman's big move. And you can see it from the booking was Drew McIntyre. Um, he, he got Brock to put that guy over as strong as strong could be. And then he puts him over strong every week on television. And, um, but, but, you know, the thing with drew was, you know, you couldn't have picked a worse time to be put over. He didn't have the big 60, 70,000 people cheering on as he beat Brock Lesnar to create a moment. It was in a freaking empty warehouse. And, you know, and he's been champion in an empty warehouse. I mean, so it's kind of like he doesn't look like a superstar out there in that empty warehouse. He looks like a guy play wrestling in an empty warehouse. Then they all do. Everyone does. So it's it's been it's just a tough situation. I mean, it's like I I, I still think that like until we get back to normal, judging anyone right now is it's a crapshoot and I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry about it. You can't worry about ratings. I, I know it's going to be real tough for the numbers to come back. I, I realize this damage is not going to be undone just because we have fans back and it may not, it may come back slowly. It, it may, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I see, you know, there's a great argument, especially when I see UFC numbers um, and NASCAR numbers as well. There's a great argument that maybe you should have shut down instead of presenting the inferior product and then had a big, you know, big, big thing. Hey, we're back in business now. And then when you're back in business, um, you know, the fans miss it and come back and you do really big numbers as opposed to the way they do. But, you know, wrestling was able to continue and and they were going to continue as long as they were able to. That's just the nature of people who run wrestling.